Hello folks and welcome back to True Crime Phenomenon. This is Josh coming back at you with another video. This is the Jeremy DeWitt Bond Hearing Part 6. And this video is going to start off with Amir Ladan uh, doing a cross-examination of Corporal Ramsey. And Corporal Ramsey testifies on the officer safety bulletin as well as Jeremy and Metro Stage YouTube videos. And then uh, there's a lot of conversation about who's actually posting them. And Ramsey says that the videos are of, you know, Jeremy DeWitt being posted by Jennifer Burton on behalf of Mr. DeWitt, even when he's in pr uh, prison, jail, whatever you want to call it. When he's in there, there's recorded phone calls where he's saying, where she's saying, okay, this is what we're going to post. It's very clear. There's there's no real amb ambiguity, amb ambiguous nature to it, okay? So, uh, then Amir, Amir's really fighting an uphill battle here. Let's be honest. Um, you're defending the indefensible. You know, there's pictures of Jeremy uh, gripping his weapon, and they you know, go into detail of how they know, how uh, Corporal Ramsey's able to identify Mr. DeWitt uh, because he runs out of gas, and the video is a constant stream. So he runs out of gas, he pulls out his wallet, He's got his ID there, which has his full name, address, everything, his credit card, and his badge, which is hilarious. Like, why would you care? Why are you carrying a badge? You're not a police officer, not even a security guard. You know, top flight security. Go watch the, uh, the Tampa Bay edition. You'll love that one. We'd like to talk about top flight security. I mean, it's literally Jeremy. <clears throat> so then Colin Moore takes back over. They talk about the stand down orders and uh, how that emboldened Jeremy's behavior, which if you watch the videos, it really did, because he really felt like he could get away with everything, right? So uh, <laughs> they talk about how Jeremy's always saying, well, the judge said, go pull the records. The judge says it's okay. They pull the records. There's nothing there. And then uh, they speak about the letter that was sent to him. And uh, they, go, <laughs> they go over Jeremy's uh, utility belt and on that he carries a fully functional asp, a pepper ball weapon, pepper spray, handcuffs, uh, he wears a bulletproof vest, he's got flashlights on his belt, glove case, and a tourniquet. And so then they, <laughs> uh, you know, they talk about, uh, they, well, first of all, they let uh, Amir do a re-examination, recross, which the judge allows. And Ramsey gets to dig into Amir uh, about the March arrest. He said, well, on the March arrest, was he wearing handcuffs? He said, yeah, he had them on him when he was brought in. And Amir did not like that. <laughs> it was awesome. So get on you, Corporal Ramsey. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much summary of this video. Uh, tomorrow we're going live at noon Pacific Standard Time. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Josh with True Crime Phenomenon, and I'll catch you on the other side. So the stand down order was a blanket order for everybody to stand down? Correct. I mean, yes. Okay. I want to turn your attention to state's exhibit number one, which was this um, bulletin that was just brought to my attention today for the first time. That bulletin was put out in what year? Uh, I believe 2019. Okay. That's, so, that was the one from the sheriff's office. There was one put out by the city, and, and I can't, I mean, I can get it for you, but uh, that might have been put out just prior to that or the year before. So roughly two years. The current one? The yes, current sir. bulletin? Yes, sir. Correct. Um, have you ever heard on any of the videos that you've seized, any of the phone calls that have been made from the jail, any conversation that came out of Mr. DeWitt's mouth, anything from him that would indicate that he intends to commit suicide by cop? Not the word suicide, no, but he did do in February of... Uh, 2021, he did post one of his living the life of uh, Mr. DeWitt, or however he puts it, that uh, uh, he was not going back to jail. And he made it clear that without going through it and seeing exactly, I can paraphrase, he made it clear that he was not going to go back to jail. Okay. Well, Mr. DeWitt's gone back to jail in March. He's gone back to, to jail again since then. And yet here we sit. So um, when it comes to the YouTube things that you've watched do you know who the author of the videos is on the, on the youtube videos of mr dewitt standing there talking right. mr dewitt okay 
Do you know who posts those to the inter internet for uh, Metro State? Well, I'm, I'm just, I, guess, I guess you can say I'm assuming that Mr. DeWitt did because he's the one stating that, you know, living the life of, and you asked me to post this, so I'm posting it. So, yeah, he's made that comment multiple times. Okay. Uh, you, you, you wanted to see what it's like to, for me to go through Starbucks. So here it is. So it would pretty much make sense that it was him posting it. Okay. Now, he might have somebody who physically uploads it. Right. That I can't say. I don't know. So that nothing that you've done during the course of the investigation would lead you to have personal knowledge of who's actually posting to the website, correct? I have not investigated that. That's what you're okay. referring to. Sure. And, and you continue to see posts on that website even while he's sitting in here in jail, do you not? Uh, a, f a few have been sent to me, but I try not to watch them because they're a little disturbing. Okay. So there are posts being made to the website that you're attributing to Mr. Witt while he's in jail that somebody's posting. Well, the ones I think that you're referring to that I've seen have been uh, like jail phone calls where he's on one side of the phone and Jennifer's on the other and they're having a conversation. Is that what you're talking about? That's and, among and, them, yes. Yeah, and Jennifer's the one who's posting those on behalf of Mr. DeWitt. And, I, and I've heard the conversation that, uh, you know, he's asked her to put out stuff to make okay. sure stuff's put out. So, again, you're, you're, you're here before the court testifying about Mr. DeWitt doing this and Mr. DeWitt doing that. And really, these are assumptions that you're making based on how it's presented to you, not based on actual knowledge. Well, I mean, somebody printed the money, but I know it's good money because I can spend it. Mm -hmm. And, and you haven't investigated who's posted any of these things, so you are making assumptions about that, too. I'm not making assumptions. I mean, it's, I, I guess it's common sense. I mean, right. either he's doing it or he's has, having somebody do it, but when he says, this is what you wanted to see me doing, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think he's recording it just to hold on to it. Okay. Um, the... Pictures that have been introduced, there are two pictures that you're saying are of him with his hand on top of what you're calling a firearm or weapon, um, and then one where he's gripping it. How do you identify the person in the screenshot or the still shot, if you will, um, of those photographs? Are you talking about the ones we just looked at, the five? Yes, sir. Oh, you must have missed when I talked about the last page. No, that I didn't was, miss uh, it. I'm asking how you identified the stills that were taken. As it being him? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> when he's walking by the car, you can see his reflection there. Uh, if you watch the entire video, there's not a break in the video anywhere up to the point where he walks up to that car. So when he's on the side of the road, he pulls his wallet out. You see his badge. You see his ID. You see the credit card, the Citibank credit card that he loses. Uh with his name on it, then he drives to the pump. There's never a break in the video. He pulls out. He's mad now because he can't find a credit card. He just lost. Pulls out another one, uses it, which you can see his name. And then he continues on, leaving the, the store and goes, yells at the guy in the uh, black truck, and then starts yelling at that individual. Uh, my experience with Mr. Witt and, and several hours of talking to him, uh, I recognize his voice. And, of course, when he's walking by the car and you see his hand, placed on the weapon the way it was, uh, you can see an image of his face there as well. And I've seen it enough where I can recognize that that was him. So the stills from the car, the reflection in the car, and the, and the last photograph of the wallet are all from the same video that you have personally watched in its entirety, and you're indicating that that's how you can identify Mr. DeWitt as being the person in those photographs? Correct. As it relates to what you're referring to as the weapon, how do you know what he's putting his hand on based on um, the videos? Does it show what it is in the video? When you say what and it shows, what do you mean? So I'm assuming he's got his right hand on something based on the reflection in the glass. Mm -hmm. So how do we know what that something is? How do you know what that something is? I, you mean like the same way? How would I know if it's a firearm or a weapon? I wouldn't unless I was there to pull it out of the holster. Okay. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what it is, whether it's a firearm or, or a pepper ball gun. That would be my next question. My, my question is actually broader than that in the beginning, but that would that would have been my follow-up question. So my question is, he's got a, a tool belt, right, uh, that he's wearing with, with various items on it. How do you know what he has his hand on based on that photograph? <clears throat> 
I believe there's other body cam video that we have uh, uh, reviewed from that same uh, funeral escort. And if I'm not mistaken, we do see a picture of him. But without that, uh, being that was not presented today, just past behaviors, past what I can see in the reflection as he's walking up on it, it to me it looks like the top of a firearm. Okay. It looks like the top side of a holster with the handle grip of a firearm. Did, uh, did the individual in that video ever speak with you? Uh, the one from Seminole County? Yes, sir. No, we identified him and turned that over to Seminole County. Okay. Do you have a moment, Your Honor? Uh, sure. Thank you. Redirect. Just briefly. Um, so to be clear, th there's been since 2014 a couple different stand down orders. Yes, sir. One in 2015 and now another one. Yes, sir. Um, and your experience. Did you say 14 or 15? Um, you start off with starting from 14, you said it, but it was 15. Okay. It's actually 15, 19, and then just recently. Okay. And we talked about how you were initially talked with Mr. DeWitt in 2014, 2015. Your experience with these processions is that they became more aggressive with over time. What? His experience. Uh, with these processions became more aggressive. The funeral uh, oh. processions, escorts, sorry, became a, more aggressive in nature. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you believe that these stand down orders would have something to do with that? I, I do believe that it, it empowered him. Has Mr. DeWitt ever mentioned that he's aware of these orders? Yes, he has. As a matter of fact, uh, he, he constantly mentions it in the different interviews I've had with him and, and also uh, on the videos from 2015 that he uh, recorded. Has he ever produced any kind of document showing that he's allowed to do this? No, uh, and he said that the judges have told him he can do this as well, and we've asked him if he could provide some type of documentation that says that. And he, he tells us we can go pull the records and hear the judge say it, but there's no written documents for that. As a matter of fact, just the, the contrary, I know in 2015, the sheriff's office sent him a letter uh, telling him what he could and could not do and made it clear. It was uh, certified, it was sent to him certified. And uh, when Windermere interviewed him, he acknowledged it. When I interviewed him, uh, I believe it was October 16th, I believe, or thereabouts, maybe the 26th uh, of 2019, we discussed that letter, and he acknowledged uh, receiving it as well. And regarding the um, pepper ball gun that he carries, which looks like a Glock, um, has he made public comments about the fact that he always carries this and that he's allowed to? Yes, he has. As a matter of fact, uh, when after the, the March 23rd arrest, when he left, uh, when he went to pick up his motorcycle from the tow yard, uh, he was on the news doing a news story, I guess. Uh, he wasn't doing a funeral escort or anything, so I'm not sure why, but he was wearing the same or a similar weapon and a paddle holster, not like the utility gun belt, like what we can wear, but it was just a holster that slides in the, the belt uh, with a badge right next to it. Uh, so I'm not sure why he would need to, to wear that for self-defense, but uh, he continues to wear them. And, and the problem is we don't know what they are. He, we could stop him, and five minutes from now he can go change that and have a real gun, and we wouldn't know it. Um, so in March of this year when he was arrested and he had it, um, he would have also been out on bond um, in all of these cases, correct? Correct. As a matter of fact, the Mahoney case, uh, he somehow convinced the judge that that was a prior uh, case 
and uh, that we were using Did you his say body. Prior? Cam. Yes, ma'am. That it was a prior case, and that we were using his body cam uh, to make that. And his his lawyer made the argument to the judge as well. But what it really was is it was a, uh, a case that had happened after the fact, after he was already out on bond. Um, does he also wear handcuffs? He does. He wears, uh, well, this will help understand how he's become more aggressive. When I stopped him uh, and spoke with him in 2015, he had an ass. And asp is our metal sticks, basically. This was a gutted asp. It was only the handle inside the belt. Uh, he claims to have had a, uh, his weapon then, but he did not. And, and I, it's based on his own video. He doesn't have it. Uh, <clears throat> carries pepper spray. Carries handcuffs. Uh, carries a, uh, a tourniquet. Does he wear a, um, a bulletproof vest? He does. He wears a bulletproof vest, and he states because he would never, ever go out and get on his motorcycle and do this without it because it saved his life. However, he drives around in his car all day wearing the same vest. And No further questions, John. May this witness stand down? Uh, unfortunately, Your Honor, I have to ask a couple follow-up questions. Oh, okay. I usually don't allow refrost, but if you didn't know that, I will allow it this one time. I appreciate your honor. Um, they also elicited additional testimony that was being... Well, I didn't hear any objection from you. No, your honor. Thank you for the accommodation, Judge. You're welcome. In March, when you arrested Mr. DeWitt, was he wearing handcuffs? Or when he was arrested and you interviewed him, was he wearing handcuffs? Uh, well, he had them on when he came in. <laughs> That's cute. You said, is he, was he wearing handcuffs? Did I misunderstand the question? Uh, no, I think you're being sarcastic. Your, your testimony was he has continuously escalated the level of whatever you perceive this danger to be. And that, you know, he had this weaponry of some sort now, and now he carries something else. Are, are you just, are you asking me what he had on his, uh, as you described it, tool belt, what we call a utility belt, his gun belt? Yeah. Okay, so that day he had a a, uh, a weapon that uh, looked just like a Glock. Right, which was what? Say again? Which was what? What was it? March 23rd. No, what was the weapon? It wound up, uh, after the fact, it became a less lethal or a pepper ball gun. No, actually it was a less lethal pepper ball gun the entire time. You just didn't know it until after the fact, according to your testimony. So other okay. than the pepper ball gun, what else did he have on his utility belt? He had a can of pepper spray that was empty. He had a fully functional asp. He had a tourniquet. He had uh, ammo pouches, but he called them utility pouches. Uh, it took several tries of talking to him before he would call them what they really are, is ammo pouches for holding magazines. They were empty. Uh, he had two handcuff cases on. Both of them were empty. He called those utility pouches. Now, in the past, when I've come in contact with him, he's had handcuffs in them. Uh, but this particular day, he did not. And he told me this is what he keeps his uh, CPR mask in, his gloves, you know, those type of protective things. However, that day, they were completely empty. In the middle of his back, he had a, hand, or a uh, glove case, which is kind of like a case that folds over. You stuff your gloves in. Uh, when I opened that up, and he did not have any gloves in that either. Uh, I think the only thing that he really had that was legitimately there was probably the tourniquet and the gun. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for Josh here at True Crime Phenomenon. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a great day.